Hello everybody, welcome to episode 2 of Premiere Pro CC 2015. I'm going to be showing today how to do, or, or just the basic layout of, of uh, the software here and kind of where everything is, where these windows are, and kind of how to get around that layout. First of all, I've just got a little project open here. I want to show one kind of major uh, shortcut that's used in uh, Premiere, and actually After Effects is kind of cool, it's unique to Premiere and After Effects, is uh, the use of the tilde key. The tilde key is the little squiggly key that's just above the tab key. In fact, here is the tilde key right there on this little Google image there. That, that is the tilde key. Uh, that key will, what, keep it in mind, when you mouse over a certain window here uh, it, and hit that tilde key, it toggles full screen, virtual full screen for that. Uh, I talk virtual full screen. I'll talk about full screen and video playback later on, but it does virtual full screen for each one of these windows here, each one of these four windows. So if I mouse over this, I want to see a closer look at my assets. I hit tilde, to, and it comes full screen. Get out of that by hitting it again. Up here in the source monitor, tilde. Over here in the timeline, tilde. Over here in the um, program window, tilde. And just hit it again to get out of it. Or I believe escape gets you out of it. No, it doesn't. Tilde. There you go. So that's a cool little short shortcut feature there. Um, but now I want to talk about all these individual sections here and the kind of the names. First of all, this area down here is called your project uh, window. Your project window contains everything uh, that you're going to be editing. It contains your assets, your video clips. It contains your audio clips, JPEGs that you bring in. It contains titles and video generators and uh, timelines as well. This contains basically all your assets and you can organize these assets down in the project window here. Uh, same area here that kind of shares, naturally shares the project window is you've got the media browser which is a convenient way to browse uh, media on your hard drive to import them into your project. You can either use the Windows browser and you'll notice actually I'm on Windows right now because my uh, Macintosh uh, video card is crapping out so I'm going to my PC which is fine because it works just the same and actually it's got a better video card so yeah up yours Mac uh, I don't mean that I love you come back to me uh, anyway you got a few things up here media browser to go through and find uh, media or you can use the Explorer on on Windows or your finder on Mac and find the files that you need and and that will help as well libraries this is a new feature that uh, they have added to 2015 uh, the libraries you're able to sync uh, some of your assets, a lot, many of your assets to the to the Creative Cloud server, to the cloud, and um, and basically you'll have access to those from any uh, computer that's online. And you can also decide if you want other people to have access to those things, if you want them public or not. There's going to there's a big public library that people can build up and and add to, and you can uh, grab some of those public things as well. And you can also buy things off of Adobe, and it will add it to your library as well. Uh, graphics and animations and other things. Info is going to show information for certain video clips on your timeline or for your settings on your timeline. Um, effects, this is where all your effects reside where you're going to be adding transitions and uh, things like color correctors and uh, filters that will change the, the, the nature of the clips uh, will all be found in here and we'll cover these later. Markers, it'll show any markers that you make. We'll, we got, we've got a chapter that will be upcoming on uh, markers and how to use markers and how they're helpful. And then history. This is incredibly helpful right here. I love Adobe's history. Uh, their undo features here. Uh, for undo, basically, this is everything here, a list of everything that I have done since I've had the software open. And uh, you can go all the way back to the beginning here and click there, and that will undo everything that you've done up to that point. Or you can click on the very end here, and that redoes everything that I just undid there. Or you can go back one step at a time and undo one point at a time. Or you can hit Control z and undo one step at a time. Or Control shift z on a PC will redo and actually uh, command shift uh, Z on a Mac will redo so you d do control Z undo control shift Z redo so that redoes all the steps or undoes all the steps or you can just do it in one, one fell swoop there just boom and it's all done all the undos are done there but now that's basically what this area is down here I'm gonna go back to my project tab one thing that they have changed in the new 2015 updates is uh, they used to have a little scroll bar here on the top that you could scroll through all the uh, extra uh, see right now I can't get all, I can't get all the way to the history right there. So what you have to do to get to the history is you go full screen to make more room, or you click on this little arrow tab, 
and you do, and you tell it to show the history, and there it is. I think I kind of like the scroll tab a little bit more, but this this works as well. Uh, and actually, I, I don't use that very much because I usually just tilde that, and then I have access to most or all the tabs. Okay, this window right here. This is the source window. And notice as I'm uh, going to these windows, I'm clicking in them. And as I click in them, look at this little highlighted bar right here. This is going to be important when you're operating with. This is going to be important when you're operating with shortcuts, because whatever shortcuts you're using will uh, mainly affect the window that is selected. It'll it'll affect those windows first. So keep it in mind. See that little blue highlight there? That means I am operating within the source monitor right now. And this source monitor is basically a clip editor. You can double click on clips and when you double click on clips it will load it into your source monitor and once it loads it into your source monitor you can put in points and out points uh, to get rid of the excess on the clips and then drop it into your timeline. So this is a basic editor right here. It's a basic viewer and a basic editor to put an in point and out point on your timeline and shove it into, into your sequence into your final timeline here. So also up in this area here you have your effect controls. On individual clips you will be able to control uh, the effects that you add to clips and uh, you'll select a clip down here and it will show its attributes right up here as you select a clip in your timeline. So the effect controls will affect any clip that you have selected. You have an audio mixer meter here to show individual audio channels on your timeline or of a clip to show their levels. And then metadata uh, for any clip that you select. Whether you select it in your uh, project window or in your timeline, it will show all the metadata and all the properties for every single individual clip. If you ever need to access those, you can tilt it over that and go through it and look at the file information uh, to see if there's any information uh, that you need to, to see if there's any pertinent information for, to your project. So I'm going to go back to the source monitor there. Now we're going to go down to uh, our sequence. By the way, this is the toolbar. We'll cover this in, a, in an upcoming tutorial as well. But for right now, the selectable areas is going to be the uh, the sequence here. The sequence or the timeline is where you're editing your movie. You can see the, the movie being edited here, and as you see these things being cut in a sequential manner from beginning to end, and you got the playhead here that plays through it, it'll display up in the program monitor where you, what frame your playhead is over. So as you play through this, you'll see the frames update here and display what your movie is looking like as it's being edited, and that is what the program monitor is for up here. So once again, project area, source area, sequence area, and program area. And once again, if you click in these areas, it's selected. Now I want to show you a shortcut here for selecting these areas. Let's start on shortcuts right away. Uh, this is a very important if you're trying to be, be quick because it takes a long time if you want to select this window to drag your mouse up here and click. It's a quicker way of doing that. And it is holding down the shift key. And while holding down the shift key, you hit shift, you hit one, two, three, four. Not on your numpad but on the top of your keyboard. So Shift 1 selects your project area, Select 2 selects your source area, Shift 3 selects your uh, sequence area, and Shift 4 selects your program area. So if you're trying to operate in an area pretty quickly here, and say you want to fast forward or rewind, uh, say we're in our source monitor, Shift 2, and we want to get to our sequence so we can do some quick editing in our sequence, just hit Shift 3, I'm there, now I'm going to hit rewind, I'm hitting J here to rewind, but we'll, we'll go through that and uh, as we get into the uh, further updates. JKL is your rewind, stop, and, for, and forward keys. Uh, but there you go. So shift 1, 2, 3, 4. And I think this does up to 9, so if you do 5, it chooses your effect controls. 6 controls your audio track mixer. 7 effects. 8 media browser. 9 your audio clip mixer. And, uh, and there you go. So 1 through 9 selects a different window for you. But the more common ones that I that people use are the sh at least the shift one through four uh, functions. Okay, I want to show layouts now. Uh, 2015 has added this nice little bar up here for uh, arranging your windows in a very if you're working on editing or sound mixing or color correction, you have these arrangements up here for basic assembly. You click on this and it turns this into a little editor where you can just double click on clips, uh, throw them into the timeline, and do a basic assembly where you're just throwing clips into your timeline. This is really good for viewing dailies. Uh, one way of doing this, if you're going to view some dailies out of one of your folders here, I'm going to drag all these, say these are all my dailies, I'm going to drag that full folder down. Oops, I've got some disconnected clip clips, but you can hit Control tilde will send your video full screen, and if you're in a screening room and we're looking at the dailies that you just shot, now you can play through these. Now you can play through these dailies. This obviously isn't a daily because it's got video, it's got some 
uh, graphics on it. But uh, that is a good way of viewing dailies. Is just grab the folder that you imported, drag it in here, hit Control tilde, and you're watching your movies full screen from in the assembly mode. Uh, you have an editing layout. You have a color layout, fashion for color correction. This is all new to 2015. Here, this is a really cool way of doing color correction, which we'll have a module on up in upcoming episodes. Uh, I have one for applying effects, one for audio, and I've got some custom ones that I made that I've made here. The way you can uh, kind of arrange these and save them and save your custom layouts is by going to Window and under Workspaces, you'll see all those tabs here. You can also access these uh, by just clicking up here under Window and Layout. Same same sort of a process is just clicking on here. This is kind of a quicker way right here. If you mess something up, let's talk about rearranging windows right now. First of all, I'm going to lay this out just for editing, basic editing. I'm going to show you how to move these windows around here. Uh, first of all, you can change window sizes by just getting your mouse in between on these dark lines in between your windows. And you can grab those and clicking and dragging and it will change the size of windows. Say we want a little bit more video window here. I can drag that down and I got a little bit more uh, video window space or I can grab that and move it up and get more timeline space so just depending on how much space I want and where I want it same here more timeline more browser space uh, whatever you want to do now if you want to get this back to normal you can go up to window workspaces what it has done is it has temporarily saved these settings to the one that I've got check marked right here the one that I have selected it has saved those settings to editing so if I go to color and then back to editing it's going to remember the last layout that I created under editing. So if you want to get that back to normal, you just go Window, Workspaces, and tell it to reset to Saved Layout. And it will reset set it back to the default layout that's saved in Premiere. It's Alt-Shift-0, by the way. And there it is, back to normal. The window sizes are back to the default. Now, uh, one other thing I want to show you is moving windows around because if you, especially if you're working on a two screen on a two monitor system and you want to have a lot of real estate, you can grab windows and you can drag them over to other monitor space. Now, uh, I'm just going to show you how to rearrange on here. If we grab one of these windows here, let's grab our timeline. Actually, let's grab our uh, effects window and you can grab this and you can move it around. You can move these to different windows. Say, I want my effects window up here. So I'm going to bring it up here. And you have some options here. Before I let go, you'll notice you got these kind of these shapes on the side, which will actually position this. If you put it on the side, it'll position this in a new window on the right hand side. Here will position it in a new window on the on the bottom and on the left hand side on the top. So watch this. I put it there. It puts it in a new window in a new window space. It just had a new window space to the right of this window. Now, if I grab this and I move it over here and put it in the middle, it's going to add that to the tabs of my source window here. So if I grab one of these, let's move the media browser up here. If I put it in the middle, it adds it to the tabs of this already existing window. If I grab that, drag it out, put it to the side, it puts it to the side. If I drag it and put it down, it'll put it underneath it. So just remember the way to restore that is you can grab it and drag it right here into the middle and it adds it back to these tabs here. And of course, when you're all done with that, if you don't like this, you can just go to workspaces and reset to save layout. So like I said, if you, want to, uh, if you want one of these windows on another screen, oftentimes if I'm working on two screens, I'll grab my timeline and drag it over to a completely different window and drop that and make it full screen and shape it to be full screen on my, on my secondary monitor space. And that way I have like a one window dedicated to my timeline or one window dedicated to my asset management. And I've got a couple of those saved, uh, default saved. Uh, if you get something that you really like, once you arrange it and you get it the way you like it, like let me make some more media space here, make this bigger, and let's say I want my effects tab right here and share it up here for some reason. Uh, once I get this and it's the way I like it, you can go up to Window, Workspaces, and you can tell it to save this as a, right now it is temporarily saving it to the editing workspace until I tell it to reset to default, but I can actually now say save as a new workspace and it will save this. It'll ask what I want to name it. I'll name it and save it. It will save it to this tab up here and it will save it under my window layouts as well. So yeah, if you do a dual screen layout, you can go up to a window and save it. And then when you're done, if you want to keep those settings, you can just start working on somebody else's computer. I'm going to go here 
I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to go to Sync Settings, and I'm going to say Sync Settings Now. It'll save my settings. It'll, it'll bring up a window and ask how I want to save this. It'll make me log in, and it will save those settings up to the, the cloud. And then when you sit down and work on another computer, you can tell it to, uh, you can sign in as, as a different user, and it will download those settings to your layout, that you're, to your computer that you're working on, which is really nice. So if you do keyboard shortcuts, if you do window layouts, it'll download all those to the computer that you're working on, which is pretty cool. So that's just a basic description of the layout of uh, Premiere and how you operate with the windows and what each one of the, these windows do. We will get into the specific functionality of these windows uh, in upcoming episodes. So keep watching and um, let me know if you have any questions or comments and post them here and subscribe, I guess is what you're supposed to say. So, all right.